This is Pastor David. I'm here with our Thursday at 3 update. And today I want to talk about three reasons why we should go to Kenya next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, I, along with uh, several young adults from our church and several young adults from other United Methodist churches in Florida, uh, will be boarding a plane and heading over to Nabasha, Kenya to visit with our ministry, Anua. And there are three reasons why I am particularly interested in doing this. And the first is to initiate and deepen relationships with the young adults in the Anua program and to encourage them by listening to them, being present for them, and treating them with dignity. Notice the goal of our trip is not to build something. It's not to provide a medical service. These are wonderful things in and of themselves, and particularly when that is what folks are asking for and need the most. You know, as uh, Americans, we tend to define uh, poverty in terms of material wealth or lack of material wealth or lack of health care. That's been our experience for so many of us. But if you get outside of America and you begin to talk to people about poverty, they usually define it in terms of a lack of dignity, a lack of significance, a lack of community, and so forth. And so we're going more than to the, the desire or the need that we have to build something. We're going to, to be present with these young adults, to listen to them, to hear their stories, to show them that they're significant, to love and treat them with dignity. And when you're struggling to feed yourself, when you're struggling to feed your siblings, when you are isolated from community because of your situation, when you don't have the hope of a future or skills you can use, Having someone come from a great distance and show interest in you and to treat you like you are a person of worth and dignity and in that offer community and offer uh, a trade, uh, skills, that is so powerful. Inua, you know, one of the things I love about Inua is that not only does it help treat, tra uh, teach trade skills that will allow the young adults to sustain them all out of poverty, it, it provides community. It provides a community of their peers and mentors in their own uh, area. It also provides a broader community in the world as we come and we say, look, you matter. You are significant. You have dignity. You have worth. You are a part of our community. And so we're going to spend a lot of our time uh, listening and talking and sharing. Uh, every day we'll be out meeting more and more involved in the new ministry. And for someone who tends to be an extroverted introvert, introvert by nature, that, that can be exhausting. I, honestly, at times, I'd rather build a building. You know, that, that's some enjoyable. But that's not the most important thing for us to do. And so we're going to develop and initiate relationships with the new young adults and to listen and be present with them and love them and treat them with dignity. Second, we're going to learn more about what God is doing through those that we meet in the places we visit. In my Tuesday night study, we've been reading through Revelation along with the sermon series, and this week we read an article that talked about some of the lenses we read scripture through. That is, that we each tend to bring our own story and use it as a lens as we read the Bible. And it has this example, it's going to come up again, I'm sure, of the story of the prodigal son and how the prodigal son encounters a famine and in that lack of, of food decides to return home to the father. Most Americans, when retelling the story, do not mention the famine. They, they skip right over it. In fact, I, I'd forgotten there was one in the story. Yeah. But most folks from other countries that have experienced hunger or famine, like let's say Russia was the example the article mentioned, who had, had famine in his past history, mention that as a part of the story. We, we just have our own way of reading the scripture through our own needs, our own lens, our own culture. And so we need to, we, and what that means is that we often uh, miss out on the, the, the broader picture of what God is doing. We, we tend to think that we're the center of the story and forget there's a much broader people, community, world, universe. And that the way to, to kind of break that chain is to, to listen and interact with others as they, from different experiences, encounter the scriptures and God. And so we're going to, to literally broaden our understanding of what God is up to 
uh, by interacting with those that, that have had different experiences. In fact, I'm calling this a pilgrimage. I'm not, I'm not calling it a mission trip. But it's, it's, of course, going first and foremost to encourage the new youth, but, but it's also to be transformed. Years ago, I read a, a book by a Catholic priest who uh, was called The Ruined Life, and, and he had set up these mission uh, service opportunities for young adults, and they would go and they would be transformed. They would encounter things that would change the way they looked at the world. They could no longer be the same. It ruined their ruined their life, so to speak, from what they had before. And, uh, you know, we, we get a biblical sense of that. Jacob wrestling with God at the Javik River. God touches his hip. And he walks with a limp from his encounter with God. You know, we're going to, to grow and to learn ourselves and, uh, and to have our life forever changed. And that's good for individuals, also good for church. And that's the third reason we're going, the third goal, which is to deepen the relationship between our church and the Anua ministry. Uh, we need to remember ourselves that, that we're not always the center of the story, that, in fact, God is up to much more than, than we think and is active and moving in ways of folks of different experiences than we do. And so we hope as taking young adults and folks from our own family that we will be the leaven and the loaf that will help uh, continue to broaden our church's encounter with God. So to, to love and treat the young adults there with dignity, listen to them, be present with them, to, to encounter God in the new way ourselves and to have our lives ruined and then to help our church on the back end of that grow through that. Now, we don't, we don't have to go to Kenya. I don't have to get on a plane for 16 hours to do that. Uh, there are plenty of opportunities in our own neighborhood. There is, there is poverty all around us. Again, uh, we may not see the material poverty uh, as much, though it's there. Uh, but there is spiritual poverty. There is a poverty of community. Uh, there are systems and structures that tend to bind and chain people. And what can we do? as a church family, what steps can we take to treat our neighbors with dignity, to show them that they are of worth, to invite them into deeper community? This is one of the challenges we face in this season of the church. And, you know, where can we learn? Our encounter with God is not the entirety of what God is doing. Who can we interact with that has a different experience that we can see God in a more full, full see God more fully? A more complete way. One of the great things about Orlando is there's great diversity in Orlando, even in this uh, North End of Winter Park, Maitland, and so forth, College Park. We're not in the wheat fields of Kansas, no offense. Uh, wheat fields of Kansas are beautiful, but there's a great deal in diversity and a great opportunity to encounter others who are walking with God and God is in their life that we can learn from. What can we do to listen better and to broaden that encounter with God? I ask that you pray for us. We're leaving next Wednesday, be gone for a week. I uh, ask that God would provide protection and that we would have an effective trip in showing Christ's love. I thank you for that. In the meantime, God bless.